welcome. I'm Kayla. I'm an 11th grader at Brooklyn Friends. Um, and it's really nice to have you guys here. Thank you guys for joining us this afternoon. Through Brooklyn and Solidarity, we partner with local organizations um, to highlight and take action on timely social justice issues that are identified by a cross-school cross group of students. Um, what began as a collaborative desire to explore and respond to the ban of asylum seekers and refugees in 2017 further evolved into a multi-year effort that engages students in examining important local and national issues so that they can galvanize around collective awareness, raising, and action. And this year, the topic we chose to focus on was democratic responsibilities. We are so grateful to have connected with the Brooklyn Public Library 28th Amendment Project to give voice to the most important issues facing our communities today and discuss how the U.S. Constitution supports or hinders our contemporary society. We hope, you all hope, and I'm part of this group now, that we have a voice and we should have a voice, and at least we have the power to constantly renegotiate our voice. The idea of, uh, of the 28th Amendment is uh, really just to think about the non-existent 28th Amendment, there are 27. So we thought with my team that it would be really nice to to meet you guys, meet the people of Brooklyn, to think about what is missing from the Constitution, how we can feel more recognized in, uh, in, in our democracy. And at the end of the last session, which I believe will be at the end of June, we'll send all these notes to our framers. They're gonna look into it and they'll come back to us at the end of summer and show us the draft of this imaginary 28th Amendment, which then the library will release on behalf of all the participants right before the election. Anais, in last week's discussion, she said, people will oftentimes think that as teens, we don't have developed brains, but maybe because our brains are maybe less developed, we have more flexibility. And so we can see things differently from the adults who are in charge. But what are you thinking would be really important and essential and just good information, good language to add to the U.S. Constitution? Universal health care, especially in the wake of COVID-19. I think that our government should at least provide all families a basic income or opportunities to have like the most basic level of being able to thrive. So that means have raising like the minimum wage. Could you flesh out what thrive means? What really is important is that people are happy or that people feel like their needs are met. And our government, it doesn't always consider us as having the right to be able to thrive. Well, I thought that it would probably be helpful if like there was protection for families who experience violence from like government officials because they work with the police or something that they get away with most of the stuff that they do, which is unfair. So I think that there should be something against that. The coronavirus crisis has really shown what the need for um, worldwide, or I guess national healthcare for all, um, because some people don't have the income to provide for that. And we've seen in other countries, their systems have worked extremely well and we just don't have that yet. When the um, pandemic started, it became clear that there are not systems in place to protect like our parents and our families who are working. There aren't backup plans. There aren't sufficient funds being made available for us. Prison reform with all these people in close captivity, it kind of worsens the coronavirus for everyone. And I feel that if you educated more people, in prison, it would cause a lot less people to stay in prison. More adequate rent protection laws. You know, when there's a global crisis, all of the other problems are sort of exacerbated. There's a concept called brief but brilliant, and you uh, exemplified that, so thank you. I think it's time that we give people the new beginning they were looking for, that when they come here, people think of America as like this big place for new opportunities, and I don't think it's ever really been that completely at least. And I think it's time that we sort of live up to the mission statement, I guess, of the country. Focusing on healthcare and rent stability and also stability for people with like our jobs. Um, so if they don't have jobs during this time, they don't have any income. You should treat everybody as if you were talking, like as if everybody is either your brother, your sister, your sibling. There should be some sort of wording that like 
family does not only extend to who like birthed you into the world, but it also as a president, but it also extends to who needs you to take care of them.